Hi guys, it's Miss Freeman. Today I wanted to show you the presentation that I'm giving on December 21st, 2020 at 1030 in the morning in case you weren't able to make it. Today we're just going to be discussing 20 new books that are coming out in 2021. As we go along, um, there is a rating sheet you can fill out so I can see your opinions and decide whether or not the books would be a good fit for our library. A quick disclaimer, these are by no means all of the books that are coming out in 2021. As always, if there's a book that you want that I haven't heard of, please let me know and I'd be happy to buy it for our library as long as it's school appropriate. We have a budget for a reason <laughs> and it's exciting for me to get books that you guys are excited about. So if you haven't already, go ahead and pull up the Rating New Books Google form, which is linked in the description of this video. As I go through, you can follow along with the presentation and fill out the form for each book. There is a quick one through five star rating, one being bad and five being good, and a place where you can put any comments you have about the book, um, about whether you, or not you like it, if you like the cover, um, or even if you think it's really bad, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Each slide looks something like this. So at the top, you'll see the title and the author. You'll see the cover art, and you'll see some brief information about the book. For each slide, I've included the day it debuts, a rating from early readers, so people who have a copy before it's out to the public, the genre, and the number of pages if that's available at this time. So for each slide, I'm also going to read a quick summary. There are about one or two paragraphs, so you can get an idea of what the book is actually going to be about. So here we go. The first book is called The Gilded Girl, and it's by Alyssa Coleman, and here's a quick summary. The Academy for Practical Magic is the best kindling school in New York City, and wealthy 12-year-old Emma Harris is accustomed to the best. But when her father dies, leaving her penniless, Emma is reduced to working off her debts to Miss Posterity along Izzy, a daring servant girl who refuses to let her magic be snuffed out, even if society dictates she must. Emma and Izzy reluctantly form a pact. If Izzy teaches Emma how to survive as a servant, Emma will, re will reveal to Izzy what she knows about magic. Along the way, they encounter quizzes that literally pop, shy libraries and talking cats, that is, house dragons. But when another student's kindling goes horribly wrong, revealing the fiery dangers of magic, Emma and Izzy must set aside their differences or risk their magic being snuffed out forever. All right, I'll give you a second to leave your rating, one through five stars, and write a quick comment if you'd like. Luckily here, if you need to, you can pause the video. So I'm going to go ahead and move on. The next one is called City of the Plague God. This one comes out on January 5th. It has 400 pages, so it's a little bit longer than our typical novel, but it is typical of a Rick Riordan book. Um, which is what this is. It wasn't written by him, but it is one of his um, books in one of his series. So here's a summary. 13-year-old Sikh wants a simple life, going to school and helping at his parents' deli in the evenings. But all that is blown to smithereens when Nergal comes looking for him, thinking that Sikh holds the secret to eternal life. Turns out, Sikh is immortal but doesn't know it, and that's about to get him and the entire city into deep, deep trouble. Seek's not alone. He's got Belit, the adopted daughter of Ishtar, the goddess of love and war on his side, and a former hero named Gilgamesh, who was taken up gardening in Central Park. Now all they have to do is retrieve the flower of immortality to save Manhattan from being wiped out by disease. To succeed, they'll have to conquer sly demons, treacherous gods, and their own darkest nightmares. All right, so go ahead and pause the video to leave your rating and leave your comment, and I'm going to move on to the next one. This book is called The Accidental Apprentice by Amanda Foodie. It is part of the Wilder Lore series. It comes out on March 30th, and it is an urban fantasy, so a fantasy that takes place in current time in a city environment. This book is so new and not quite finished, so we do not know how many pages it has. Here is a quick summary. Thankfully, as an apprentice to the town's mushroom farmer, 
Barclay need only work hard and follow the rules to one day become the head mushroom farmer himself. No danger required. But then, Barclay accidentally breaks down his town's most sacred rule, never ever stray into the woods, for within the woods lurk vicious magical beasts. To Barclay's horror, he faces a fate far worse than being eaten. He unwittingly bonds with a beast and is run out of town by an angry mob. Determined to break his bond and return home, Barclay journeys to find the mysterious town of lore keepers, people who have also been bonded with beasts, and share their powers. But after making new friends, entering a dangerous apprenticeship program, and even facing the legendary beast of the woods, Barclay must make a difficult choice. Return to home and the rules he's always known, or embrace the adventure awaiting him. All right, go ahead and pause the video if you'd like to leave a rating or a comment. And here we go into the next book. This one is called Glitter Gets Everywhere. It comes out on May 2nd next year. The ratings so far have been very high. Everyone who's read it has rated it a five stars. And I don't mean to <laughs> sway your rating at all, but um, that's just what's going on so far. This one has family, relation, friendship, and loss, and is about 320 pages. And here is a summary. Kitty's mother died on an inappropriately sunny Tuesday. So much had changed in Kitty's life over the last few months, and she needed the world to stop spinning around her. She needs things to return to normal, or as normal as they'll ever be. Normal definitely does not include her family moving from behind their home in a cozy corner of London all the way to New York City. Moving means leaving behind her friends and neighbors, her grandmother, and all the places and people that help Kitty keep her mother's memory alive. New York City is bright and bustling and completely different from everything Kitty has known. As she adjusts to her new school, explores her new city, and befriends a blue-haired boy, Kitty wonders if her memories of her mother don't need to stay in one place, if there's a way for them to be with Kitty every day, everywhere. With her wry, poignant wit, Kitty tells a universal story about the grief of losing a beloved family member, the fears of starting over, and the challenges of how to remake a family in this powerful, heartfelt debut novel. So this is the first novel from Yvette Clark. And again, it's called Glitter Gets Everywhere. So go ahead and leave your rating and any comments you have. If I were to make a comment, I would say this cover is gorgeous. <laughs> I absolutely love it. All right. Next. This one is called All You Need Is Love. I love the little pun there with the bread. That is beautiful. This one is so new, um, so fresh that it comes out in 2021, but we don't even know the date. We don't know how many pages it has, but what we do know is that it is realistic fiction. So fiction that takes place um, right here, right now, um, and could actually happen in real life. And the readers who have already read it have really enjoyed it. Here's the summary. 12-year-old Alba doesn't want to live with her estranged grandmother in Barcelona, but her mother needs her to be far, far away from their home in New York City, because this is the year that, mo that her mother is going to leave Alba's abusive father, hopefully, if she's strong enough to finally, finally do it. Alba is surprised to find that she loves Barcelona, forming a close relationship with her grandmother, meeting a supportive father figure, and making new friends. Most of all, she discovers a passion and talent for bread baking. When her beloved bakery is threatened with closure, Alba is determined to find a way to save it, and at the same time, she may just come up with a plan to make their family whole again. Mm, that one sounds so good. Um, but go ahead and leave your own rating. <laughs> Don't let me sway you again. Um, and leave your comments. The next one is called Of a Feather, and the cover features an owl, a woodpecker, and another little bird. Um, this one comes out in February next year. It has 336 pages. Here's the summary. Great horned owl Rufus is eight months old and still can't hunt. When his mother is hit by a car, he discovers just how dangerous the forest could be. Rini has given up on adults and learned how to care for herself. A good thing, since she's sent to live with an aunt she's never met. Yet, this aunt has a wonderful secret. She's a falconer who agrees to help Rainy catch an, catch an injured passage hawk in the wild and rehabilitate it. When Rainy traps 
for Graggle Rufus, his eyes lock on to her heart, and they form a powerful friendship. But can Rufus learn to trust on the outside world and fly free? And can Rini open up her heart enough to truly soar? So this one, I think, is in two points of view. Um, one point of view being the owl and one being Rini. Next, we have a sports story, and this one is called Much To Do or Much Ado About Baseball. So it's a sports story. It'll come out this summer, June 1st. Here's a summary. Trish moves to the town of Comedy, Massachusetts, and finds herself on the same summer baseball team as her math competition rival, Ben. The two 12-year-olds have set aside their dislike for each other in order to help their team win, but the team is terrible. When a booklet of math puzzles claiming to reveal the ultimate answer arrives, Trish and Ben start solving them, and the team's luck seems to turn around. Or is that because of the unusual snacks they're getting from the new snack shop in town, the salt shaker? When excitement then leads to tragedy, can Trish and Ben find the answer to the ultimate puzzle, or will they strike out when it counts the most? The companion novel to Midsummer's Mayhem combines math, baseball, food, and magic. All right, go ahead and give this one a rating. Leave a comment. And I'm going to move on. You can pause the video if you need to. This next book has a cover that I am in love with. It is called The House That Wasn't There. This will come out this winter or next winter, I mean. Um, we're not sure how many pages it has yet, but it is a book with magical realism. And here is a very quick summary. They don't even have um, the full summary written yet. So here we go. The House That Wasn't There is a gently magical exploration of the spaces between people and the mysterious interconnections that bind them. With feline, feline teleportation, school research projects, and a taxidermied opossum named Mort. The publication is slated for winter 2021. So that one sounds like it's going to be quirky and fun. Go ahead and leave your rating, any comments you have, and I'm going to move on. This one is called Root Magic. It's going to come out on June 1st, just like Much Ado About Baseball. And this one has 352 pages. Here's the summary. It's 1963 and things are changing for Jezebel Turner. Her beloved grandmother has just passed away. The local police deputy won't stop harassing her family. With school integration arriving in South Carolina, Jez and her twin brother, Jay, are about to begin the school year with a bunch of new kids. But the biggest change comes when Jez and Jay turn 11 and their uncle, Doc, tells them he's going to train them in root work. Jez and Jay have always been fascinated by the African-American folk magic that's been the legacy of her family for generations, especially the curious potions and powders Doc and Gran would make for the people on their island. But Jez students find out that her family's true power goes far beyond small charms and elixirs. And not a moment too soon, because when evil, both natural and supernatural, comes to show itself in town, it's going to take every bit of the magic she has inside her to see her through. Interesting. Combines fantasy, the paranormal, some historical fiction, where they talk about segregation. Very good. Next, this book is called That Thing About Bollywood comes out in 2021. Early readers have liked it okay. They've given it a 4.33 average. And this is a contemporary fantasy novel. So it takes place right now, but in a world where fantasy exists. And here's a summary. You know how in Bollywood, when people are in love, they sing and dance from the mountaintops? 11-year-old Sonali wonders if they do the same when they're breaking up. The truth is, Sonali's parents don't get along, and it looks like they might be separating. Sonali's little brother, Ranak, is not taking the news well, constantly crying. Sonali would never do that. It's embarrassing to let out so many feelings, to show the world how not okay you are. But then, something strange happens. Something magical, maybe. When Sonali gets upset during a field trip, she can't bury her feelings like normal. Instead, she suddenly bursts into a Bollywood song and dance routine about why she's upset. The next morning, much to her dismay, Sonali's reality has shifted. Things seem brighter, almost too bright. Her parents have Bollywood makeovers. Her friends are also breaking out into song and dance. 
and somehow everyone is acting as if this is totally normal. And that is hilarious. <laughs> it, it would be like if you woke up in a soap opera and um, suddenly everything was gorgeous and filmed with a beautiful lens and people <laughs> were super dramatic. Um, yeah, Bollywood, I think this one's going to be really great. Go ahead and leave your rating, any comments you have, and I'm going to move on. This one is called Take Back the Block, and I think it has a gorgeous cover. Cover. <clears throat> it's going to come out on January 26th. And it's had really great ratings so far. Here's a summary. Brand new kicks, ripped denim shorts, royal blue supreme tee. Wes Henderson has the best style in sixth grade. That and hanging out with the crew, his best friend since little kid days. And playing video games is what Wes wants to be thinking about at the start of the school year. Not the protests his parents are always dragging him to. But when a real estate developer makes an offer to buy Kensington Oaks, the neighborhood Wes has lived in his whole life, everything changes. The grown-ups are supposed to have all the answers, but all they're doing is arguing. Even Wes's best friends are fighting, and some of them may be moving. Wes isn't about to give up the only home he's ever known without a fight. He's always been good at puzzles, and he knows there must be a missing piece that will solve this puzzle to save the Oaks. But can he find it before it's too late? Awesome. So that one, again, is called Take Back the Block. Um, so you can go ahead and leave it a rating, leave it some comments, and I'm going to move on. The next one is called Six Feet Below Zero, and to me, this cover is so different than the other ones I've seen before, which is really exciting. It comes out next year. We don't know the exact date yet, and it has a mystery adventure sort of genre. Here is a summary. Caught in a one-of-a-kind predicament, 12-year-old Rosie and her younger brother Baker must honor their great-grandmother's final wishes by pretending she's still alive until they can find her will and locate their dear Aunt Tilly. Rosie and Baker do their best to follow Great Grammy's plan and act as if everything is completely normal. But as their lives get bigger and bigger, so do their problems, and the biggest problem of all? Their wicked grandmother, the horrible Grim Hesper. Okay, that one sounds pretty good. <laughs> kind of silly, kind of mysterious, a little bit adventurous. Go ahead and leave your rating, and I'm going to move on. This one is called One Jar of Magic, and this one combines magic and family relationships to create a really fun-looking book. Uh, it comes out on February 9th, and it has 352 pages. So here is the quick summary. Rose Alice Anders is a little luck. Lucky to be born in the Anders family. Lucky to just be special and magical as the most revered man in town, her father. The whole town has been waiting for Rose to turn 12, when she can join them in their annual capturing of magic on New Year's Day and become the person she was born to be. But when that special day finally comes, Rose barely captures one tiny jar of magic. Now, Rose's dad won't talk to her anymore, and her friendships have gotten all twisted and wrong. So when Rose hears whispers that there are people who aren't meant for magic at all, she begins to wonder if that's who she belongs with. Maybe if she's away from all the magic, away from her dad telling her who she's meant to be, who she has to be, Rose can begin to piece together what's truly real in a world full of magic. Wow, I think we can all identify with that one a little bit, um, with adults or with people in charge telling us who we need to be and us thinking, wow, is this who I want to be? Um, so I think that's, that's a good story that a lot of us can relate to. This next one is called Drone Chase, and it comes out on January 6th, so in just a couple weeks. Um, it has 232 pages, and it is realistic fiction. Here's the summary. When his orphan bear cub goes missing, 16-year-old drone enthusiast Ray McClellan decides to use his airborne spying skills to find it. Little does he know that a bear poaching gang operating in the surrounding forest has drones too, and a cold welcome for anyone who would attempt to take them down. As a New York City kid recently forced to move to the Great Bear Rainforest by his parents, what Ray doesn't have is a lifetime of outdoor instincts or familiarity with the valley and its wildlife. 
that makes him very different from his grumpy grandfather, who, like his new school friends, berates his city kid uselessness at every opportunity. Can Ray use his drones and smarts to prove himself, find his cub, and expose what's going on in the woods? Awesome. So that sounds like a really, a really good one, too. Um, includes drones, which is exciting. Sounds like there's some nature in there. Very good. Go ahead and leave your ratings. Leave some comments and let me know what you think. All right. Next is The Ghoul Next Door by Cullen Bunn and Kat Ferris. Now, this begins our, um, our graphic novels. The rest of these you'll see are all graphic novels. This one has 200 pages and it comes out on July 13th. Um, and I picked it because I know you guys, I picked it for this presentation because I know you guys really like scary stories. Um, and here's a summary. MJ knows what it means to hurt. Bruises from gymnastics heal, but big hurts, like her dad not being around anymore, don't go away. Now her mom needs to work two jobs and MJ doesn't have friends at school to lean on. There is only one thing MJ loves, the world of professional wrestling. Oh no, this doesn't sound like the right book. <gasps> this is the one I'm talking about. Oh no, this is Bump. Um, so that part of the summary was about Bump <laughs> by Matt Wallace, not about the ghoul one. Um, I skipped a slide. So this one comes out on January 26th and it has 232 pages. Um, so again, this is about MJ, um, whose dad is gone. Mom needs to work. And we're going to continue with the summary. <laughs> so as I said, there is only one thing MJ loves, the world of professional wrestling. She especially idolizes the luchadores and the stories they tell in the ring. When a chance encounter with her neighbor, Mr. Aureliano, reveals that he runs a wrestling school, MJ has a new mission in life. Join the school, train hard, become a wrestler. Once MJ starts training at Victory Academy, she feels like the hurts in her life are beginning to heal but trouble lies ahead. After wrestling in a showcase event, MJ attracts the attention of Mr. A's enemy at the State Athletic Commission. There are threats to shut down the school, putting MJ's new home and the community that welcomed her at risk. What can MJ do to save her new family? All right, so all that was bump. I'm sorry for the confusion there. Go ahead and leave your rating, leave a comment. And I'm going to move on actually now to the ghoul next door. <laughs> Again, this one comes out on July 13th, has 200 pages, and it is a graphic novel. Bump is a regular novel. So here is a summary of the ghoul next door. 11-year-old Gray lives in the legend-haunted New England town of Anders Landing, and he can't help but feel like a pair of eyes is watching his every move. He discovers odd, gruesome bits and pieces from the graveyard that are left to him as gifts, like art, carved from bones or jewelry made from, hopefully not human, remains. Soon, Gray is caught up in something bigger than he could have ever imagined. He finds himself drawn into a strange mystery involving a race of reclusive subterranean creatures, ghouls, the eaters of the dead. Whoa, that one sounds so cool. <laughs> Go ahead and leave your rating. Leave your comments. Pause it if you need to. And I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next book. This one is Green Arrow Stranded. Um, it is a DC graphic novel. So those of you who are a fan of the DC universe, you'll love this one. Nice and short, 144 pages. And this one comes out on July 6th. Here is the summary. Following a plane crash on a deserted island, 13-year-old Oliver Queen must learn the skills he needs to survive and to protect his injured father. Ollie has always hated the idea of hunting, but his dad insists that they go on this trip with his business partner, Sebastian, and his son, Tyler. When Ollie fails to take the perfect shot, the teasing starts, and he wonders if his dad will ever be proud of him again. But just when he thought their trip couldn't get any worse, their private jet is struck by lightning and crash lands on a deserted island. Ollie awakens to find his dad seriously injured and the other passengers nowhere in sight. If they hope to survive, he's going to, need to, he's going to have to learn skills he's been avoiding developing so far. He has never felt less sure of who he is or if he will be able to hang on until help arrives. So this is a book for those of you who like survival stories like Hatchet. Um, you'll all enjoy this one. Next, 
is Lucy in the Sky. Um, this is one I couldn't help but to include in this presentation because I love the Beatles <laughs> and just seeing this cover makes me happy. Um, you don't have to agree, um, but I thought I'd include it just in case you guys share my love of the Beatles. This one comes out on May 1st and here is the very quick summary. They don't have a very long summary out yet. It says, ready for the Beatles to be considered history? Uh, at least they're still inspirational. After find, finding her father's collection of Beatles records, 12-year-old Lucy starts her own all-girl rock band as a distraction from family struggles. So, like I put here, uh, the genre is music and family. They don't know how many pages it will have yet. It's still going through the editing process. Second to last, we have this graphic novel called Allergic. This one comes out on March 2nd, and it's going to have 240 pages, so a nice size graphic novel. Here's the summary. Maggie's going to get a puppy, but she discovers she's allergic to anything with fur. Her parents are occupied with preparing for a new baby, so how can she cope with the disappointment? This graphic novel follows her attempts to find a dog that won't make her allergies worse. Any allergic kid will appreciate seeing their ailments captured here. Those who aren't will better understand their struggles. To me, this is a book for someone who enjoyed Guts by Rania Telgemeier. Um, it shows the struggles of everyday kids, um, those with allergies or those with anxiety, um, and puts them in a more easy to understand light. Go ahead and leave your rating and a comment if you want to. Remember, you can pause the video at any time. And this is our last one. This is a graphic novel that is written um, based on a regular novel that was put out when I was <laughs> probably your guys' age, 10 or 11 or 12, maybe 13. You may have heard of it before. It's called Be More Chill. Um, this is a sci-fi graphic novel, um, and I'm going to go ahead and read you the summary. I think this is one that you guys will really enjoy. Jeremy here is your average high school dork. Day after day, he stares at beautiful Christine, the girl he can never have, and dryly notes the small humiliations that come his way. Until the day he learns about the Squip, a pill-sized computer that you swallow, the Squip is guaranteed to bring you whatever you most desire in life. Soon, he's friends with his former tormentors and has the attention of the hottest girls in school. But Jeremy discovers that there is a dark side to handing over your control of life, and it can have disastrous consequences. All right, that is the end of the presentation. Um, you can obviously go back and rewind, rewatch any segments you need to, to make your ratings. Whenever you're ready, go ahead and submit your rating sheet so I can see what you think and make decisions about what to buy for next year. I really hope you saw at least a few books that you enjoyed um, and that you had some fun filling out the ratings. I hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.